This is the Los Angeles Times Grand Prix. A star-studded field and an array of legal horsepower rarely seen in American road racing. If you thought last year's Times Grand Prix was a barn burner, brother, hold your hand. Everyone, I'm Dave Despain. Welcome to another edition of the Glory Days, reliving the great moments, the great races in the history of motorsports. Riverside International Raceway is just a memory. An hour or so east of Los Angeles, a subdivision now stands on what was hallowed ground to those who live for speed. Speed was what made Riverside special back in the Glory Days. Its backstretch was one of the fastest in American racing. And in 1965, that seemingly endless strip of asphalt was traversed at breathtaking velocity by a remarkable field of international sports car racing stars. The Times Riverside Grand Prix was unprecedented. It had a record crowd, record purse, and record speed. The entry list included Jimmy Clark, world champion and Indy 500 winner in a Lotus 40. Former world champion Graham Hill of England in a McLaren Oldsmobile. Indianapolis winner and defending champion in this race, Parnelli Jones in a Lola Chevrolet. Bruce McLaren of New Zealand, whose name graces one of the world's great race car lines. Jim Hall of Texas in the radical Chevrolet-powered Chaparral. Mario Andretti, champion of the U.S. Ovals, destined for greatness in road racing. Up-and-coming star, Jackie Stewart, his Lola, powered by Chevrolet. Versatile Dan Gurney of California in a McLaren Ford. Walt Hanskin of New Jersey in a Lola Ford. And Mexican Grand Prix winner Richie Ginther in a Lotus 40. Now let's take a 1965 style onboard camera lap of Riverside with Skip Scott. All right, now we're coming onto the start finish line into a very fast left uphill turn. Brake slightly, back on the power, and ease her on around over. A few little bumps in there make it a little tricky. Down a short straight into a fast right. And now down approaching into the S's. up into six. This is a sweeping right-hander, decreasing radius. Out of this one, swing out and down a short stroop, straight into seven. Up a little hill, break at the three marker. Down a gear, a decreasing left-hander. Tuck it in, tuck it in. That's a good look at the racetrack. Let's see who is getting around it fastest. The man who called the action back in 1965 was Les Kiter. Here's Les to tell us how they qualify. The fastest is Bruce McLaren of New Zealand in a prototype McLaren Elva powered by an Oldsmobile engine. McLaren established a record lap of 1 minute 26 and 6 tenths seconds. A real battle is expected between McLaren and Jim Hall, who sits second on the grid. Third is Jerry Grant from Kent, Washington in a Lotus Chevy followed by Pernelli Jones, Walt Hanskin, and a surprisingly fast John Cannon in a GD. Practice and qualification sessions have already taken the toll of many of the top drivers. Grand Prix sensation Jackie Stewart blew two engines and will not start. Scratch one Lola T70. USAC champ Mario Andretti was pushed off the track in the 20-lap consolation race. Scratch another Lola T70. Just announced is the surprise withdrawal of Jim Hall and the Chaparral 2C. The trouble? Rear end suspension. The Chaparral team will go with only one car. Half Sharp will be at the wheel, starting eighth on the grid. 
Jim Hall has withdrawn with rear suspension problems, uh, Bruce. And you, will this make your driving uh, strategy any different? Well, yes, because I would have had to go just as hard as I possibly could to have stayed in front of Jim. And uh, this, uh, this has really surprised me. And uh, it's certainly going to change the picture. I can't believe that we're going to be this lucky. A sun-baked crowd, upwards of 85,000, await the start of the Times Grand Prix. 77 laps and 200 miles through the twisting, tortuous Riverside track. The total purse is just under $50,000, one of the richest in road racing in the world. The cars are approaching from the false grid, a field of 40, the most impressive array of cars and drivers seen anywhere in road racing. The field of 40 is assembled, engines running, awaiting the green flag. Most of the top drivers from the world over, Bruce McLaren, Parnelli Jones, Half Sharp, Graham Hill, Jimmy Clark, Jerry Grant, Richie Ginther, Dan Gurney, Walt Hanskin, Chris Amon, Hugh P.K. Dibley, and more. The cars are set to go. Some delay, apparently trouble with one of the cars further back. Bruce McLaren, very anxious to get going. That's Jerry Grant next to McLaren, also upset about this long delay. The flag is ready. They're moving the problem car off, and there's the start. Walt Hanskin jumps out in front very quickly from the second row. McLaren, who was first on the grid, had a slow start, and is lost in the shuffle about eight places back. Trouble in turn two. An accident involving two cars. Don Wester in a genie, car number 60, seemed to slow to almost a stop and was hit in the rear by Charlie Cox in a Cooper, car number 39. Also involved is number 29, Rick Muther. The rest of the field is picking their way through the melee. There's no fire, but the ever-alert emergency crew is spreading foam on the cars just to be sure. We'll try to get a report on the drivers.